Today we're doing Star Trek Beyond. What did you think about this episode? Episode? That's, that's a good point. Star Trek Beyond is a movie, but it feels like an episode in my opinion. Gotcha. The storyline isn't as epic as a movie requires in my opinion. So therefore, 6 out of 10. I th- oh. Yeah, Just 6 savage. out of 10. <laughs> savage explanation. I mean, 6 out of 10 is not It's not great, not terrible, but right, right there in the middle. D's um, get degrees. That is right. It's a 60%. That is scraping by with a D. So I did think I did like the production values of Star Trek Beyond. So like great sets. Uh, there's good acting, good CG. I did like when they were like going through the USS Franklin. I kind of enjoyed that uh, ex- exploration part being down on the planet. Um, and there were some cool ideas in there. Like the space station was kind of cool with the gravity all over the place. Um but there were a lot of problems. Like the swarm tech was overpowered. I didn't know why Starfleet didn't have a contingency for that. The Yorktown, which was cool tech. What what are we doing putting this in vulnerable space? What are we doing? Um, the Franklin being operational felt weird. Like it's what, a couple hundred years old? What, okay. Um, and it, like we said, it felt like an episode instead of a movie because I don't know. It didn't have these huge overarching storylines, character development, in my opinion. Uh, It felt like it could have been like an episode of The Next Generation. Um, And I didn't feel the character arcs like in previous movies, especially Star Trek 1 from 2009. I really feel like the characters and, and their development and the feeling of hopefulness for Starfleet and Kirk and Spock. I just don't, I didn't feel that in this one so much. But overall, it's a solid entry. Lots of problems, but a solid entry. So overall, I give it a 6 out of 10. What did you think? I also gave it a 6 out of 10 for similar reasons, actually. So there's a different, there's definitely a different feel from the first two films. It was a lot more philosophical in, the, in this movie. And it dealt with the internal feelings of, of the characters, which I, I'm super into. I, I dig that stuff. Um, I agree that there wasn't so much of a character arc for the characters, for, for most of the characters, maybe one or two. Um, but there was very good character arcs for the characters across the series. And so I see what you're saying in terms of an episodic feeling where you may have one episode that, that focuses on character A, then the second episode is on B and C and it separates it. But across the whole, across the entire series, I felt like there was very good character arcs for, for a lot of the characters. The sci-fi was super cool. So there was like, the, the main enemies, or I guess the only enemies, have this distributed swarm attacks. Very cool, very sci-fi. I mean, I guess we do encounter that now, like the Navy will get attacked by a fleet of little little skiffs. Um, but that's really not the same as this like dangerous this swarm where they're attacking you from all sorts of angles. Uh, very cool. And the enemies could live forever by stealing life from people, effectively vampire, but technological. Um, yeah, cool, cool ideas. And and I really like these in this idea movies when when you have characters or people that are stranded on islands or planets and then you see how their culture evolves over time. So the consequences of being stranded. And we see that in Star Trek Beyond with, with the bad guys. Super cool. I like these things. Um, the cons about this movie is that the science is, m- is much worse. It's much worse compared to the previous two Star Treks. It very much feels like an afterthought. Now, that's okay because in principle it's an it's like a sci-fi action film it's not it's not a scientific journal right but but the problem is that you get scenarios that if you were to pay attention to the science you did the things carefully they just wouldn't happen and if if that's okay if it's a little side plot or whatever side saying you know, a side joke or whatever but if it's actually a plot point that should never have happened it feels it, it rips me out of the universe it rips me out and it's like this is now drama for the sake of drama which which i feel like we should have purposeful drama that naturally arises from the scenario and then the characters have to deal with it. I think this is the most compelling the co- most compelling storytelling we can do. Okay, and then the enemy, the the crawl, the bad guy, was his it was his underlings, were there, were all the the, the the bad guys that are like swarming the ship, were they his former crewmates? Because by the end, he doesn't care about them. They're like dying left and right. And he's just like mission oriented. I'm focused. I wanna I want to take it to Starfleet. Like but if you're the captain and your crew is dying, you feel like you should care more about that. Weird, weird, weird inconsistency about it. Um, and then Starbase Yorktown is severely underdefended, which 
it's like a glass ball sitting out there in space and can be attacked from all sorts of angles. And I feel like in the Kelvin timeline, which has had Nero and Khan, and, and they should be, they've even said that that because of Nero and Khan, the, the Starfleet is aggressively searching space. I feel like under the Kelvin timeline, Starfleet should be more cautious. And so the Starbase should be more, there should be onions and, and like onion layers of defense around Starbase Yorktown. And so to have this, this Yorktown Starbase so exposed feels inconsistent to the universe, which felt weird. It felt weird because the Kelvin timeline is supposed to be this more battle-worn timeline, but then here we are doing, being, being super exposed. Very strange. Okay, that was it. Ready to talk about the episode, the movie? 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 Let's do it.